Hi, welcome to Messy and Perfect Life with Lee. I'm so excited about this episode today. I've been dying to get this gal on my podcast and she's here. If you would right now, remember to subscribe to my podcast and hit the bell so you don't meet, miss an episode because there's some good shit going down, especially today. I would like to welcome Haley Linda. Haley, say what? <laughs> I would like to welcome Haley Lennon. Hello, Haley. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm ecstatic, tickled pink and happy as all get out because you are a powerhouse. You are hard to hold because you are pulled so many different ways. And I'm so honored to have you here. Thank you for making time. Thank you. Of course. I'm happy to be here. It's just been a crazy month for me with work, but I'm happy to be Why? here. Why? Why has it been crazy? Uh, um, so I've been in DC the last three weeks. Um, I'm an attorney in the space in the crypto regulatory landscape has just been nuts the last month we had um like the Biden administration put out their executive order and there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes with regulators and enforcement actions and so it's just been a really busy month here in dc but it's all it's been awesome okay so i just jumped right in because you excite me so much i didn't even introduce you so <laughs> i just want to i want to introduce you and then i want to take three grounding breaths with you because i figure when we all kind of when we come together in this, that, that kind of quietness with all the craziness that you're experiencing yeah. and me in a different way that we can really connect and give the best information. So um, Haley Lennon is an attorney with Anderson Kill. She's a crypto. What, what did you say? How did you describe it, attorney? Uh, re I do regulatory. I'm a regulatory attorney in this space. So when you guys heard like um, there was an announcement or I think I got a tweet or I saw somebody sent me an article about Biden kind of clamping down on Bitcoin or wanting to regulate it, which is the opposite of, of what it is, you know, the platform yeah. that it's decentralized. I kind of giggled because I was like, you can't, bitch. And then at the same time, I was like, well, can he? So yeah. it's so awesome to have you here. And I, I would like to kind of jump into that a little bit because that's what's present and that's what you're there. What does that look like? Yeah, no, it's it's a good point. So being an attorney in the crypto space is kind of funny because at at its core, I would say cryptocurrency and the goals of Bitcoin are to eliminate the need for government regulation interference and and banks and governments being being an intermediary so um but at the end of the day cryptocurrency in a lot of ways is functioning like money and a lot of people are putting a lot of us dollars into it and so as soon as that happens it really does sort of become under the purview of regulation in the us and so i think what's interesting about the Biden executive order is that um, I think it's the first time that like a pre the president of the United States and the White House has given a nod to the fact that this isn't going anywhere, you know, for a long time. Um, yeah, because think, people say it's a fad or anything like yeah. that, or it's not proven. It's not that. It's, yeah. well, actually, the, the biggest, you know, government in the world or right. the biggest power in the world is giving it a nod. So I love that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I don't think that the, a lot of times government and regulation coming into the space is not viewed as a good thing because it can stifle innovation. But in a lot of ways, the, you know, the White House doesn't put an executive order out about a fad or something that's just sort of fleeting. Um, so I felt like it was the first time we got, um, yeah, I think, I think we have the, the United States government saying, okay, this is here to stay. Let's try to figure it out. Um, and maybe Let's try and get a piece of it. <laughs> yeah, yes, that too. Unfortunately, actually. Um, yeah, I think that they want to understand how to use Bitcoin technology for, you know, a central banking digital currency. And that's not really the right, the direction we want to go. I, I would say like Bitcoin kind of functions on its own, like you said, and that's a really healthy and good thing. But, um, but it's still, it's still, we've made a lot of progress in the last 10 years with the, with the reg, with the government and, and even countries making it legal tender and that sort of thing. So, so it's nice that it's legal tender, but I'm curious if it is a decentralized entity, how can a centralized institution, government bank, you know, how can they be a part of it? That that's, I, I can't get that. Um, so the way I would explain it is if a, if a company is involved in cryptocurrency, even though the technology 
technology itself is decentralized, a company is regulated. Um, so we can use like Coinbase, for example, where you can go buy and sell cryptocurrency. They're going to need to really function as a bank and comply with regulations that are in place for um, anti-money laundering and consumer protection and that sort of thing. So that's that's where regulation comes into play. I get it. So it's kind of whoever's using it is working with the government and does have to pay taxes and do all that stuff. So how right. do you use this decentralized thing and incorporate it in the way we work with our with our country, with our government? Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's I interesting. Mean, yeah. I mean, in my, in my perspective, financial privacy is really important. That's the goal of, of we'll say, Bitcoin to eliminate the need for government involvement and like banking surveillance of what we're doing with our money. But money can be used for money laundering, illicit activity, financial, you know, terrorism, um, and or financing like terrorist activity. And so there has to be some balance of understanding who's using this cryptocurrency and for what. Yeah, because I heard that like, um, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency had given at, at that point $20 million to the Ukrainian government um, through uh, cryptocurrency. And I was thinking, holy heck, that means that people could be giving it like China or whoever to the Russian government as well. Yeah, I mean, um, what cryptocurrency allows is pretty much borderless payments and cross border payments that are done more easily and quickly and in larger scale and that's a really powerful good thing right that's like yeah. technology evolving and our financial system evolving and in a lot of ways the way the banking system and traditional finance functions it's just hasn't sort of kept up to up with the times um but with increased technology there always is some increased risk that companies in the space need to be aware of and they are that you know they come like a, a coinbase is very heavily regulated and complies with all of those requirements to know who their customers are and do transaction monitoring and make sure they aren't um facilitating payments on someone on the ofac sdn list which is like the terrorist list that you're not allowed to facilitate payments on um transactions with so you know, there's this idea of crypto is unregulated. It's not, but it has a lot of potential for decentralization. Um, so what is it about, about like miners or I'm not even sure the exact terms where if somebody does do something that's not outstanding, if somebody does do something that's shifty, that the community of, um, uh, should I say Bitcoin or cryptocurrency? The community the community of, like, let's say Bitcoin. And we say Bitcoin because earlier you said, I'll just say Bitcoin because it is the biggest cryptocurrency, the most successful, the most established, correct? Yeah, I think if you get into, if you start just saying cryptocurrency, that can encompass so many other projects that we may not really be talking about today. I mean, in, like in 2007, there was the ICO boom where companies were kind of using cryptocurrency, ICO stands for initial coin offering, you know, companies were sort of using cryptocurrency or tokens to raise capital. Um, and that's what got the SEC really involved in the space. Oh. So, so there's, um, so yeah, I like to focus more on Bitcoin because I feel like it was put out anonymously by a person or a group of people by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. It's remained, you know, it's remained anonymous. Um, it, it, there isn't some centralized company that 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 Bitcoin is raising capital for. In a Wait, way. I love that. To, so, to, I love that Toshi Nakamoto said, uh, like one of his last kind of reach outs was, "I got something else to move on to. Good luck." Yeah. So he kind of just presented it right and gave it to us. Yeah, I and, mean um, that that's like the core definition of decentralization, and that's why some cryptocurrencies that are more um, the the point is raising capital for a company, like directly raising capital for a company. I, I don't think that that really is in the same. Um, it's not on the same platform as as Bitcoin. So that's that why gave I, me that, that gave me goosebumps when I just said that because there's something so sweet about saying I have created something so beautiful. Here you go, people. Mm -hmm. Benefit, yeah. enjoy, thrive. Right. Yeah, and I mean. 
part of that may have been that I, I think if we knew the identity of the person or people behind it, like, I mean, that would just be so strange, I think, because first Yeah, off, it would be a drag because like, it's so mysterious. <laughs> yeah. And like, I mean, that person or, or group of people's like personal security would probably be an issue. I mean, there's just a lot of factors that come into play. But yeah, I do think that the way the Bitcoin white paper was put out there um, and then the way it was adopted early on by people really interested in this and like building um, within the ecosystem was is a really cool thing. And it's and it's still happening today. Um, what you mentioned earlier about miners and like validating, you know, um, Bitcoin, the, the reason it's called a blockchain is that the blockchain is like the ledger that records Bitcoin transactions. And um, so it's kind of like Santa Claus's list of good and bad that it's just <laughs> all there. Yeah. And you can just see it and go, they go through it. Yeah. I mean, unlike a bank's, you know, centralized ledger that you would never see the, the movement or transactions, the, the blockchain is, um, you know, decentralized and publicly accessible. And, um, but through that, you know, you need a way to sort of validate that the block, that the creation of Bitcoin through mining and the transactions themselves are validated. And so, um, so that's, you know, just part of sort of the magic of, of the Bitcoin. I love paper. that. I yeah. love that so much. A, I love the word white paper because I'd yeah. never heard about it until my friend Martin Go Goman, who's launching his guildable, I can't even think the right word right now, but he's launching this. He's like, I wrote my white paper. You know, it took me so long and I'm just kind of refining my white paper. I was like, what the hell is a white paper? Yeah. But is it basically just a document that gets in detail what's coming on Web3 or what's coming in the meta world or? Yeah, I mean, I guess I would define, I mean, a white paper is really putting forth the protocol or how the how the uh, protocol or, or cryptocurrency will function, you know, so the white paper explains sort of the purpose, the purpose of Bitcoin, how it functions, how, how the mathematical equation works to mine a Bitcoin, how the validation works. So yeah, it kind of is a high level or not, maybe not even high level. It's a it's a pretty in depth summary of of an idea. I think it's kind of high level. Yeah, because I read it, and my eyes were crossing, but I was like, "You got this. Just keep reading." <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how can I ask how old you are? Some women don't like to say. Yeah, I'm 34. Okay, what the fuck? You're 34 years old. You're wise as I mean, you're like I'm an to old me. Soul. <laughs> no, besides an old soul, you're a wise soul beyond your year. Like you, the 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 mastery you have and the knowledge you have where the hell did it come from how did what happened <laughs> who are you it's at 34 good, years old yeah I mean I uh I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer um my grandfather was an oil attorney in Texas and he actually tried to convince me for years not to become an attorney but I just knew <laughs> that's what I wanted to do um you said, Grandpa, you inspired me a little too much. Yeah. I was like, all right, you told me not to do it. I'm going to go do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've been working in the space since 2013. And, and so I feel like as soon as you start to go down the rabbit hole of learning about this stuff, like you just, you can't stop. Um, oh my gosh. It's and, it's like, they say orange pill. pill yeah, you can't even right. say it, an orange peel. Pilled. Pill. Like you yeah. swallowed a pill. Yeah. That's what happened with me when I asked to meet the guy who told my friend about Bitcoin. I was like, you're a good guy. And you're good at what you do. But who the hell told you about Bitcoin? I need to talk right. to that person. Yeah. And my first conversation with him, I felt like instead of a pill, I peeked behind the orange curtain. Mm -hmm. And literally, my mind expanded in a way and I saw what was coming and the people and the vision. And I went crazy with it. Yeah. I mean, I my mind was spinning. I literally like was spitting out people and freaking out and bringing people. And then I was like, well, Tillman kind of slowed me down and his his president at NFT mm -hmm. Glee, yeah. and Noah, uh, Jonah. But actually, it was good for me to slow down yeah. because I, I got so excited that I was like manic. And then I was like, step back. <laughs> Why are you here? Down, yeah. Know your mission right. and, and move slowly knowing you're bringing good stuff. Yeah. So it is that kind of, what is it about it? Is it just because you see the possibilities of what's coming and what's available to people? I think that, and um, the more you like 
the more you learn about Bitcoin, the more you also learn about the problems it's solving. Um, so it kind of is like the snowball effect, because for me, um, you know, I went to college and law school and started working and like I didn't question any of the things I question now. I didn't question like trust in the government or um, why the government has sole control of like monetary policy and inflation and money printing or how other countries and people sort of survive when they have corrupt governments or have mm. to have to leave their country because of war or other tragedies. And so, so I, have a, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that was beneficial? Because when you're in school, you just need to study, learn the shit so you can yeah. memorize it enough to get out, right? Yeah. So I think you did well. And now that curiosity, right? When did that start the curiosity? Of what the hell's going on here? So what am I fighting for? Well, so I actually have a pretty, so I graduated law school and, and did one year as a a uh, commercial litigation attorney at Gordon and Reese. And I was like, I thought that I graduated and got like my ideal law firm job. Like I felt so cool. And congratulations after- on getting that too, by the way, <laughs> right out, right out yeah. of the bat. Yeah, it, it was, I mean, it was a great learning experience and it was also eye opening for me because it was something I thought I always wanted. And then I got it and I was just not fulfilled. I was sort of just felt like, um, wow, but I guess this wasn't actually what was the right fit for me in life. And so I took a Wow, big, yeah. that's a big deal. Yeah. After spending that much time and energy and studying and money and all of that to get it, yeah. to go, oh, this is it. And it's not like I said, this is it. I don't want to be a lawyer. Um, right. But, but yeah, I always thought I wanted to be like a, a litigation attorney at a law firm and like be in court. But I didn't know, you know, you don't really pick your like area or topic of expertise. And I just felt like, Mm, like I haven't found that thing that lights me up and so yeah and 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 we don't know when we're in college right you have an idea right. but yeah. you don't know till you get there because you've never really experienced it yeah. you have no idea yeah, yeah I am um, so when I left there and I joined a company to be like their in-house counsel and it was a company in in I went to school in San Diego and it was a company in San Diego called Dollar X and what they were doing was wholesale currency exchange along the Mexico border. So, so this was the, the first time you were introduced to it or no? This was when I was introduced to fi- like financial regulation, not not even crypto. Um, this you was weren't like, in crypto yet. Right. This was, okay. this was a company that actually had like the armored cars and would go to these exchange centers like uh, dollar and peso exchange centers along the Mexico border and do wholesale currency exchange. And I- That sounds dangerous as hell. Yeah. I mean, that when you, it's funny having that perspective and then going into crypto because people talk about anti-money laundering and stuff. And I'm like, you should see what happens at the border and like the anti-money laundering efforts they have to put, put forth there. So it just really opened my eyes because I was involved in a lot of the uh, documentation and, and like, licensing for a company to physically transport you know millions of dollars across the border to take Holy it to a bank Toledo. and it's like all this like weird friction of, because it's of this these stacks of paper that people are wanting you know like that's what I, so and that's just i never even thought about that aspect of of, of, of bitcoin that right. my a girl not my friend but she was a teacher at my kid's preschool her father was killed deliver, you know, being in one of those armored trucks to deliver money killed for paper. Yeah. Yeah. And Bitcoin takes that away. Yeah, it may. I mean, it seems so crazy to me that people don't really um, like I compare it to we used to send snail mail. And now we have text messages and emails. Like there's really no reason why we should still be using pieces of paper that are no longer backed by the by the um by gold you know we're not on the gold standard anymore so who's really, backing like, who's backing the dollar like when inflation goes up and they're printing more money and it's really, what is that i, I have really no idea question i mean it, it's this i mean there are there's still some gold reserve that back dollars but it's not fully backed and so a lot of it's just our trust so somebody said at dinner the other night when I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm learning as I go, but I love when I'm trying to talk about 
Bitcoin and, you know, to tell. I'm like, wait, I do know a little more than I think, A, eh? but but when he said to me, this fellow said, you know, the the American dollar is backed by, the government is backed by banks. He goes, what is uh, Bitcoin backed by? If it crashes, where does that money go? Where do those wallets yeah. go? What is that answer? Yeah, I mean, it's- so the first part of the answer is that the dollar isn't actually backed by gold or banks. I mean, there's so, there's some insurance, you know, FDIC insurance, that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, like d- legal tender is based on the trust we have in the government that issues it. And that's like um, the Madoff thing, right? It's like when everyone, somebody does something bad, that's not not on a ledger that we can all see. Was it Madoff or did I make that name up? No, no, you, you didn't. Um, so good. I mean, when, when people lose everything in a second, like what's that security? Right. I agree. And um, I, I think that it's hard to really wrap your head around in the U.S. because right now we do still have a certain level of trust in our banks and government um, and inflation is going crazy, but we can, most people can still afford things or use dollars and use their banks. But in other countries, like that trust and the inflation has gotten so out of hand mm. that it, there really isn't a, like it, there is not value in in the dollar and when when a people bring up sort of like bitcoin's not like the value of bitcoin isn't based on anything it's a weird concept because really like at, at its core bitcoin is based on supply and demand and once again that means like the trust people have in this new technology um, so yeah, I mean, if overnight every single person lost trust in Bitcoin, it, you know, the price could, could plummet, but we've never seen that. And I think it's grown so much and, yes. and been adopted so much by institutional investors and new, um, technology built on top of it that like that just wouldn't happen. Um, uh, uh, yeah. because you brought up some government stuff, I just want to ask these two questions that actually my friend Martin Goman was like, if you have her, will you ask her this? Um, Because it's a little above my knowledge, but which global jurisdiction, (laughs) I don't know, which global jurisdictions are favoring crypto from a legal perspective? Well, I mean, I would say something like El Salvador, where they have made Bitcoin legal tender. um, Who did that for El Salvador? Who educated them and who brokered that deal? Um, I mean, the the president of El Salvador has been very public about his decisions to make it legal tender for the you know country of El Salvador itself to hold Bitcoin. So I think you know it, it kind of only takes one person. That the the pro, like in a lot of ways the U.S. is doing a good job regulating crypto, but the problem in the U.S. is that we have so many different agencies. So we have state regulators like the New York Department of Financial Services. Then we have FinCEN that does anti-money oh, laundering. We have the SEC that uh, regulates securities and is concerned about market integrity and the CFTC and the IRS. Oh my gosh. Do you have to deal with all of those? Yeah, in certain ways. Um, probably the IRS the least. I don't represent individuals. so Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, that's more of almost a CPA question. Like, how do I file you know, taxes yeah. on, on crypto earnings. But, um, but yeah, I think so in some ways, the US has done a good job regulating crypto in a lot of ways, they haven't because it's too heavy of regulation. So I do think other countries like El Salvador have done a good job sort of getting regulation out of the way. Um, I love that. I love that that country is modeling for the world what's possible. I mean, yeah. they're, you know, it's like, it's, it, that amazes me. So another question, can you tell me about the game theory of countries creating the right regulations and whether you think the U.S. will keep its lead in the crypto space? Yeah, so I mean, I I would think what what's meant by game theory is like almost... Um, there's almost like regulatory arbitrage where companies can choose to leave the United States if the regulation here is too aggressive and makes it so they can't actually innovate and and, and kind of flourish. So the, the U.S. has been really criticized for how we've regulated crypto in such a like I said, sort of too many regu- too many cooks in the kitchen, like too many yeah. regulators 
touching the space that in order to launch a Coinbase, you need to be ready to spend like $3 million on legal fees and licensing and things. Wow. Um, so I think, you know, I think the U.S., part of the executive order from the Biden administration, I think was sort of understanding that company, there are companies who have left the U.S. because of that and that you don't want company, you don't want technology and um, like trailblazers to be leaving and going to other countries. Yeah. I mean, that just reminds me on a micro level of California that that in the entertainment industry, people are going to Austin, people are now mm -hmm. going to Boston, people are going everywhere because it's not friendly here. Right. And if we do create that, you know, why a lot of our products in, uh, are made in China, you know, it's like, if we do create that, they're going to be pushing out right. butt loads. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the US has done, you know, the reason I think sometimes the US doesn't get enough credit is that they haven't ever like tried to ban, like, let's just ban mining or let's ban crypto and they never will. Right. Um, but what they've tried to do is, oh, no, this is new technology. It can be used for bad things. It can hurt consumers. It's fear based. Regulate it. Yeah. Yes. And anytime fear is in the pot. It's yeah. destructive as opposed to let's learn from it, be a part of it, enjoy it, flow with it, see how yeah. we can work together. Yeah, I agree. It, it's fear-based and um, it's threatening, right? Because the government controls money. Like, Us. They, I mean, yeah. they, they yeah. have the final say, right? If we go to yeah. war, they have the final yeah. say in, in our, in our yeah, taxes they don't and inflation. Lose, and You know, so, so they can justify it and there are like money laundering risks. So yes, you should, you, they, they have a reason, the government has a reason to want to understand how, who and how people are using crypto. But on the other side, part of it is that control and fear of oh no like the bank if the bank and the government doesn't have power and we all have just bitcoin in our own wallets and we pay each other and we've eliminated the need for that you know what's what's their purpose absolutely okay so we got kind of i got i got martin's big questions out um but i learned from him so i'm glad that i asked yeah. but i want to get back a tiny bit to you you're at this other um uh law firm Mm -hmm. dealing with the the currency being traded or, or yeah it or, was a it was a uh, it wasn't a law firm but it was a cryptocurrency it was a yeah it was a uh, fine traditional financial exchange and I was their in-house attorney um, that confuses me that it's 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 financial exchange of paper monies but it's crypto what no not sorry not crypto yet so okay, I, so you said it was a crypto company. Yeah, no, sorry, I, I misspoke. So it, okay. DollarX did, does tra did traditional currency exchange, so dollars okay. to pesos. Um, but from that, I started to see the friction of traditional finance, like that you need the armored cars, that there's all this paper money, um, that there are a lot of money laundering risks along the Mexico border. And um, at that time, Silvergate Bank, uh, which is still in the space and is a very was always a very crypto friendly bank, um, started talking to me and said, you know, a lot of the issues you are seeing with traditional currency exchange um, have some overlap in terms of law and regulations for um, for cryptocurrency companies and we want to bank cryptocurrency companies. So when I joined Silvergate is when I first got really exposed to working in in the cryptocurrency space with cryptocurrency companies and figuring out how banks can provide banking accounts to So that was 2013? Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 crypto like launched in 29. I mean 2009, mm -hmm. not 29. <laughs> Yeah, 2009. Um, so you were in four years right at the beginning and you you were having the legal mind, right? Have you kind of set the precedent or formed kind of what's happening? Yeah, the, I mean, that's what's still crazy about my job day to day, even today is there's not it's not like there's a lot of case law or things you can point to what what you're trying to um, figure out is how is it regulated? And, um, and, and as we're evolving and starting to have different types of products that touch crypto, like crypto lending or yield, like crypto that you can earn interest on, the only thing you can really do as an attorney is determine what it, what traditional financial system it's sort of analogous to. 
and try to say, okay, well, lending and traditional finance works like this. And so in the crypt for crypto lending, it should probably work like this. So you are kind of setting your own, um, you're making your own arguments and, and figuring wow. out how it should work. So you're at the forefront of this brand new space. It's really, we yeah, I love it. <laughs> It's so sexy. Like, yeah. I'm so proud Thank of you. you. Thank you. I, I, Holy hell. Yeah. I I don't think that I could ever like work in a different industry. You know what I mean? Like, this is just so like what my, where my heart is and what I'm excited about each day and what I love talking about. Um, so yeah. And how great. did you get from there? Now, I love this because normally when people become a partner, at a law firm, isn't it like you have to apply and do a bunch of hours or prove yourself or what happens? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the the typical rap, like path to become a partner at a law firm is that you're an associate for many years working for partners. And um, I was really fortunate because I just kind of decided to have my own kind of crazy path. I was at Silvergate for two years as their legal advisor. Then I joined Bitflyer, which is an, another exchange where you and I could go buy cryptocurrency for dollars. Then I went to Coinbase. So I spent all these years in-house working for a company instead of an associate at a law firm. So I got really fortunate by sort of the, the reputation I made for myself in the space, the people I got to know, the achievements I made that when... I started looking for sort of the next opportunity. Anderson Kill was like, you you deserve to be a partner. And that felt really, you know, really good. I feel like, and I feel like oh I do gosh. deserve it. I just, I just proved myself in a different way than sort of the traditional law firm trajectory. I have to just stop there because I love it so much. You know, there's so much about women, especially, you know, in any space about anything that women are like, we're left out, they don't listen to us, we're this and that. I, I've never been a part of that conversation. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. And this is a perfect example of, you know, when that is not even a part of your reality, you're like, who am I? And you're going to these different things, learning these different yeah. things, right? Because you're hungry for the learning once you got in it. And then you did this work to stand up holding your gold, holding mm -hmm. your crypto in your hands. Yeah. And then you kind of looked around, they're like, um, could you be partner? And this doesn't normally happen like this. You yeah. don't have to prove yourself because you've done the freaking work. Yeah. I yeah, acknowledge um, you for that. I, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I do. Um, I'm, I'm like you. I don't see any benefit in feeling. I, I think any person can find their own sort of like feelings of injustice in how things work or how they're treated. Like any person in the, in the world. In the world um, for anything. Yeah. And so for me, like at focusing on that, you know, and even, um, you know, for a long time, like the crypto space had this narrative of like, oh, it's just a bros club. Like it's not inclusive of women. And I would just kind of look around and say, I actually see a lot of impressive women. And I actually really like all the men in this space. And I think this, you know, I don't know why people keep, especially people outside of the industry, keep going to that. Well, um, it's, it's, Anytime we point our finger or we grab onto injustice, we're saying, I don't feel worthy of playing. I don't feel like I can be a part of it. I don't feel good enough. Because when you do, you just like, uh, I'm coming out of a divorce. Well, I've almost signed my papers, mm -hmm. 56, five kids, you know, I've done other things. And all of a sudden I saw behind this and I was like, okay, I don't have the information that Haley does, but I can get educated every day. I can do my part. I can actually start doing this on my podcast and, and, right. and showing it in a relatable way to the 84% who aren't in it in America, who haven't yeah. purchased cryptocurrency. Right. So instead of going, women aren't in it, I'm like, hell, I want to tell as many women as I can about yeah. it because yeah, there's space I mean, for everyone and it's never right. too late to get in. And that's so much more proactive, right? It's just like, see what see what you want to be different or or see what you can achieve and then focus on that and don't focus on the other, the injustices or the or the women that aren't in this space yet, like they'll come yeah. and, and more men will come and like the industry. And, and when you driving. quit talking about it, when woman, if it's you talking about it, stop talking about it and become the person in a model, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, yeah. I just think, I think bitching and belly aching about mm -hmm. Bitcoin. There's a lot of bees right there. <laughs> um, it's just like the government being involved. It's fear-based, right? Anything that's negative comes from fear. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, even even people like who are listening now who don't know much about it, if you're having fearful thoughts, if you're, look at them, examine them, ask why they're showing up. Like, is that who you want to be? Or do you want to be a forward thinker and, and jump in the game? Right. That's what I love I, about, yeah, there's room yeah. for everyone in everything. And I think, I mean, I really do think your reality is what you make it. So when I've like hit hard moments in my career or like hard decisions and changing a job, um, I just think, well, like what's, what's the worst that can happen, right? Like, or even, even reaching out to someone who I wanted to be like a mentor to me in the industry, say, well, what's the worst that can happen? I don't hear back from them, you know? So like really putting yourself out there and that's it. Once again, not having that fear when yeah. you eliminate the fear of like, what's literally what's the worst that could happen in like most situations like you have this life to live and like what's the worst that can happen i love that kind of break things down and and then when you do it anyway this is a good example my daughter just started uh running track and now she's laid in bed for three years on her phone i've never seen her run even when she was scared i was like you know how to run (laughs) and she went and practiced and practiced in her first meet she said mom I'm so scared. I'm so afraid. I said, why? And she goes, because I think I'm going to fall and I'm going to come in last. And I said, well, you probably are if that's the thought you're holding. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. So why don't you instead feel how it feels taking off and feel where you're running. And when you cross, who's in front of you? How many are behind? Think about that. She was like, I hate when you do your spiritual shit. (laughs) And then she ran the race and the gun went off and she ran and she wiped out and she skinned the hell out of her legs. And then she stood up and, and finished it. And I was sitting there like, holy hell, I told her to change her thought. And then everyone (laughs) around me was like, did you see that girl? She wiped out and she finished it with a smile on her face. She was awesome. I would have run off crying. And then all of a sudden I'm like, that was my daughter. You know, it's just so funny. It's all about attitude. It is. I mean. Yeah. It's just a choice we make. Right. And fear keeps you playing small and, and sitting down. And the other one, you know, exploring it or releasing it and doing it anyway. And at the end, my whole point of that was, at the end I said to her, that was the worst thing that could happen. How was it? Yeah. She's like, not that bad, but my legs hurt. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah. that's the worst. It happened and she's right. back at it. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I think um, I think life is too short to just focus on what you don't like or what you can't change. Like if you just keep focusing on the direction you want to go. like yeah. those, those What stuff. lights you up, I say. What yeah. lights you up? What do you think the big picture of crypto is? in in our future for our future um it's hard i mean i i honestly feel like that's in a way i would be like in the early days asking where the internet was headed you know i don't know if i can totally comprehend what what it looks like and i don't i don't think that we're going like we won't see where all this is going even in our lifetime but um but i do think that i think Bitcoin serves many purposes. One is that I think it's given people the possibility to explore ways of investing or wealth creation when they maybe didn't feel that included in other areas of finance. So I think Mm. it's like broken down the barriers to, um, and with, with reward comes risk. I mean, investing in Bitcoin or crypto uh, definitely has its own risks and the price is volatile. You can lose money. But what I think is neat is when I talk to people about Bitcoin and we get to the point where I say, you know, you can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. You could just buy $10. That's what I did. Yeah. I mean, and uh, and I, because I'm an attorney, I never make it a point to walk around trying to convince people to put their money into something. Um, but when I'm talking amongst friends and just explaining like how I've kind of handled my like portfolio and involvement in crypto. Um, I just think it's like sort of opened up the opportunities for people to figure out their own wealth um, and like financial independence and freedom. Um, I also think that it's just making it. And once again, it's sort of outside of the US at this point, but I think that there were country, there are countries and people who feel very vulnerable when it comes to their government. Mm. Um, and I think that's going to continue. I think we've started to see it really close to home. I mean, we saw like Canada and people being censored for, you know, some of the trucking, um, protests and things like that. I mean, when people are wanting to 
stand up for what they believe in, whatever that is, um, whether you agree with it or not. Like, but when someone wants to stand up for what they believe in or leave Russia, or leave Ukraine, or leave, you know, there's yeah. these like conflicts happen. Um, I think Bitcoin is giving people more opportunities there to like help those individuals who may otherwise be cut off from the financial system. And so I think we're just going to keep seeing more examples of that. But because of that and the direction I feel like we're all going um, and but I'm not like doomsday by any means. Like I think I think the world's going to continue to be a great place. But I personally like I wouldn't feel comfortable not holding some Bitcoin. It's almost I like love a, that. I, I like that. Yeah. It's a very soft kind of thing to say, meaning it's not down your throat and it's, it puts out just the possibility, right? Yeah, that's how, that's how I almost feel. I mean, I, because I've been in the space a long time, I do invest pretty heavily in Bitcoin, but even if I didn't, and I had just started hearing about this, I think I would say, well, why wouldn't I want to have, I don't know, 5% of my portfolio and investments in that, like. It's almost yeah. like diversifying and like hedging your your bets. So, you know, I don't know. Okay, so I'm really excited because I'm going to the Bitcoin conference in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. And it's coming up super soon. I know. I can't believe it. I came out to DC three weeks ago and felt like I had all this time to prepare <laughs> for my I know. So like that's here. what I was gonna say. So I went on to the to their site to look at their speakers and you are one of the speakers. I am, yeah. That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, it's a great event. It's funny because I spoke at their the first year they ever had it was 2019 in San Francisco. And it was actually just kind of in like a warehouse and it was still a great event, but it was much smaller than it is to, you know, now. So to, to have seen it sort of evolve over the last four years, I mean, I think I've heard, I've heard some crazy numbers, like 50,000 people sort of descending on Miami wow. um, to attend the event and, or maybe not even go to the conference, but events afterwards. And it's just, and you're representing one of your clients. Um, can I say a client's name? Is that confidential? Um, it's, it would be confidential for me to expose it. Oh, but, I can expose. But, but if, I like well, to expose. No, NFT Glee has been, has been open that they're fine being yes. sort of publicly acknowledged as a client. And so her client of, of NFT Glee is Tillman Holloway, the guy who I kind of heard speak and I was seeing behind the orange curtain and my mind just expanded in crazy ways. And he's throwing that party, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's called, it's it's a whaler's pass, right? But does that yeah. also mean it's like the top percent of people who have so much invested in Bitcoin that they actually affect how Bitcoin goes because? Yeah, so, so a Bitcoin whale is sort of a general terminology for someone who whose um, activity can move the market because they have such a big holding or they're making such a big purchase or that sort of thing. Um, at the Bitcoin Miami conference, um, all the speakers get whale passes and then individuals can buy the whale passes. It's like, a, it's a high, high level ticket that people can buy. I think I saw this year that, that to buy one right now is like $16,000. Yeah. It's 16,000. Crazy. Um, but you know, so the individuals who have the whale pass ticket or speakers sort of have additional access to things during the conference and this event that NFT Glee is hosting. So I think it's going to be an incredible event. Um, I've been talking with NFT Glee a bit about, you know, helping to plan or um, bringing, um, you know, more people like having sort of a short list of people I can invite. So yeah, I think it's going to be oh, that's awesome. an amazing week. You know, I'm really excited about it. Another amazing thing that you have done, I can't stop like loving you is um crypto connect <laughs> yeah so you founded crypto connect tell me about that because i look at the website and i'm like well, when's the next meeting i want to get right. somewhere i want to touch a body yeah no no that's actually like where we're at right now so last november we launched crypto connect um the board is made up of 26 leading professionals uh and all women in the space and back to sort of what we talked yeah. about yeah like i felt like I felt like, okay, let's stop talking about this being a bros club. Let's have a women led organization. But what we're providing is networking, mentorship, business development, 
um, job opportunities to everyone in the crypto space, hosting events that are co-ed and open to everyone. Um, and so the, you know, and, and I think the messaging was important there because um, like we were talking about, I don't think that it's worth making something that's women only and like, sure. we need a place to like know what, what I want is for literally any single person in the world with any background from any financial level, from any race, gender, yeah. um, to know that there's a space for them in the crypto community. Like this isn't a bros club. It's no, not- but what's cool about it is making the, th- the announcement women we got you. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. We're a community. I think, that, I think that's it. I think, I, I mean, I think women like to see other women and, and know that they can go and talk with people and learn about the space. So that was important to me. So we launched in 12 cities last November and we had our first round of 12 events. And then, and then we kind of like came back as a board and as a group and started to say, okay, how do we really make sure that we're bringing value? So as a result, we haven't had an event since, you know, late November. When's one months. coming roughly like this well, year at some point? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what we did is actually earlier this week, we announced eight more cities. And Yay. so now we have 20 city chapters. And some of the new cities are actually male led. So we're bringing some men into the board and into these city lead roles. And so, you know, we have the Miami event. We're going to be co-hosting something, I think, on the 6th. It's still. Am I coming if I have a whaler pass? Yeah, you'll be able to come. Yeah, Um, I have we have to I just it's a little last minute, but we're pulling it together. Wait, Um, I have to say one thing because you were. You were kind of emailing me about my podcast and some other questions I had for you. And at the same yeah. time, you were emailing your board yeah. and you yeah. accidentally included me yeah. on an email saying, I hey, did. you guys, we're going to have a board <laughs> meeting next week. And I was like, holy shit. I, I Haley thinks, no, I was like, Haley thinks so much of me as this newcomer. She wants me to be involved and listen oh. in what the board's doing. Oh, I, yeah. And then I you're do, like, I oops, do mistake. You so someone on our board is actually named Lee too. Oh, or that Lance made me giggle Faye. so hard. So, yeah. So I was like, oh, shoot. Um, no, I do I, want your involvement. I think. And and we so my plan is we're going to get through Bitcoin Miami um, in, I think, May. There's a, another big conference in Austin called Consensus. So we're going to be hosting an event there. And then in this summer, uh, we'll start once again, having every city start to have their meetups and that sort of thing. So um, so the, the, the website's cryptoconnect.org. And so now we have a form you can fill out with a drop down of those 20, 20 cities and, you know, specify what chapter you want to be affiliated with based on where you live. Mm. Um, and so then we'll start like emailing chapters um, in the next few months about our next event. And it's only four months old? Yeah. You've done, you do so much. You go fast and mighty. You don't mess around. Yeah. I'm about execution. I'm like, if, if someone says like, oh, we should get swag. I'm like, all right, we have swag. I just want to like, get it done, you know, get it done. Get it done. And kind of when you like put something out there, um, I don't know when I, when I say something, like I just started having conversations with women, uh, that I was close with in the industry last, like, I don't know, September, October. And then by November, we had a board of 26 women. I mean, it just like wow. mobilized so fast. Um, and I think it has a ton of potential. I don't think we've reached our like max potential yet. I think- we Well, you just to- started. Yeah. And, and, and thank you again, thank because you, yeah. you are actually creating the space to bring women in. You're actually setting it up where they can come and have a place to go. And I know there's a couple other sites like BFF who, who has an online presence or they also have like a video- and that's like 50 women. So basically, all I know is these two entities, right? Crypto yeah. Connect and this BFF space where they're actively launched and moving the troops. Yeah. And I don't even know if I'm familiar with BFF, to be honest, unless I'm <laughs> unless I'm blanking. So, you know, yeah, I think what, what I'm excited about is in this in the 20 cities we launched, there are already like Bitcoin meetups and communities there. And so the point of how crypto- do you get a part? Of, how do you get a part of that? So you just find the city in the drop down, sign the form. Yeah. And then you go and to then- meetups and just look. Yeah, what we're going to try to do is have our website be much more of like a resource for people. So you would sign up and your and LA would have its own page on our 
website and that page would have links to other meetups that exist when our crypto connect events are going awesome um, just kind of like flourish all those communities and for me like also for individuals like me who travel a lot, um, I liked this idea because it you have this umbrella organization, Crypto Connect, and when you will travel from LA to New York and you're there for an extra few days for work, you can ping into that community and say, hey, is anyone from the New York chapter want to grab dinner or... I'm oh, I love for, that. I'm looking for a marketing expert in crypto. Do you all know anybody? You know, so like my goal is for it to be like, like chapters that people can ping into really easily and remove any sort of like friction to like finding your community. Cause that's a big part of it. It's just people want to talk about this stuff and go do happy hours and networking and get jobs. So um, I love it. Yeah. I'm excited about it. So in, in the space, you know, I'm hearing a lot about, and, and it's in every space really, and I've never really jumped in any of them. So I'm just going to ask you this. So it says um, a lot of people are saying that we support women in crypto. We want to uplift women. We want to be in business with women. How do you access that? For an example, my podcast, I want to have a sponsor. I want to get a sponsor in the crypto space mm -hmm. as I am bringing in to actually feed me more people in the crypto space as well as get their message out and their platform out. So how does one go about exploring that in this new space? Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I feel like it's all about who you know, because people like hey, kind of, Lennon. <laughs> like I, I will help connect you. I mean, I think there's a lot of great organizations, like even companies that are doing um, my good friend, Kelly Weaver, who's part of Crypto Connect. She has Melrose PR, which is a PR agency solely dedicated to crypto. And mm. so she's working with a ton of projects that want you know, opportunities to talk about what they're working on and that sort of thing. So I think it's just, yeah, the more people you meet in the crypto space, the more people you know. And that's why I think Crypto Connect's important because mm -hmm. during COVID, there weren't these opportunities for in-person meetings and networking. And like networking is how this industry really functions. Um, that's why crypto Twitter is such a big thing. So people can like just get to know each other. Uh, those are two things I have to get into today. I'm actually getting trained on the Discord channel because I've got in a couple of them okay. and things are flying really fast. I don't know what to put or what to touch and there's yeah. things over there moving. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's have, a lot when you don't I've, know. But... I've avoided Discord just because I have too many things. I was yeah. like, okay. You have to stay focused. Yeah, yeah. But um, but there's great chat rooms um, on Discord and Telegram. There's, you know, these like Twitter spaces where people are just like talking about things. I mean- there's just a ton of stuff and ways to like connect with people in the industry and just learn more, which I think is really awesome because it is so new. Everyone has questions. I'm still learning things every day. Um, and the best way to do that is with each other. Absolutely. Now, are you making out with anyone now? Making out with dating, yeah, you know, French kissing, going on a date, <laughs> holding hands. I'm dating. I'm dating. Are you? Um, you know, well, I've been traveling a lot lately, and that makes it harder. Um, so yeah, you know, nothing, nothing serious. But when you travel, are you doing Zoom? Or are you doing FaceTime? Um, so I'm on some of the dating apps. And when you travel it up, oh, you, you're not dating location. a specific person. No. no. Oh, yeah, you're doing what I'm doing, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm it's just, kind I'm of just, fun. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think, I'm happy that life's getting back to normal and that they're starting to be a lot mm -hmm. more in person. I mean, I would ideally really like to meet someone organically and not on one of these dating apps because mm -hmm. I just find the dating apps a little difficult. But um, but yeah, I think, you know, dating in, the, in this century is a little crazy. Well, everything's so crazy. And I remember when I when when my husband moved out um, after some time, I got on a dating app and I freaked out that men's faces just popped up and I could smush them around <laughs> yeah. and then I could read about them and nice. that they were all there looking for the same thing. I mean, maybe not exactly the same thing, yeah. but you know, they're all there wanting to connect with someone and yeah. you know, you're building this, this connection community for women. And I also know that touch and like hugs and all of that yeah. stuff is so vital to our well-being. Right. So I love that I can look at an app and swipe around on people Right. Um, who want the same to be touched and, and, and to be in that kind of well-being as well. Yeah. I mean, I think the reason I would prefer meeting someone organically or naturally is that there's this weird time period with these apps where you're interacting with someone 
based on their profile or if you connect with them on LinkedIn, I mean, not LinkedIn, in, like Instagram pictures and you're texting with them. And then all of a sudden you come face to face in reality. And maybe, maybe they don't interact with you the way you thought they would or don't look like you thought they would or just. I think it's kind of like history. speed dating. Yeah. Like you pick a few, you're like, let's have a coffee. You're like, mm, I like you a ton. We're going to be friends forever, but we are not. I wish, going forward I wish there was an app where you spe- speed dated on the app like that you swiped and it was like one minute fo- uh, FaceTime t- talk and then you Yeah, choose. so you have time when you look kind of cute and you're ready. And yeah. It's like, hey. Yeah. What, what are you up to? Mm. At least it. it <laughs> yeah. Or. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I kind of do that on the app now. He's like, hey. You look cute. I'm like, guy, I like that compliment. Thanks. Where are you? What do you do? And I'm like, can we meet? Are we FaceTiming? Yeah. Are we having coffee? Like I can do like two or three things. And I'm like, are we meeting or FaceTiming or coffee? Yeah. Like yeah. next level or done? Yeah. Right. yeah. No time for anything else. No. <laughs> I'm just going to wrap up because I feel like it. We got a good thing. Good? Yeah, okay. I thought that was great. Okay. So Haley, you are a rock star. And um, I'm so honored to know you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so inspired by you. And I'm so happy I get to share you with my, with my audience. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been really, yeah, it's been really nice just chatting about this space and everything that we're excited about. And I'm excited to see where it all goes. Me too. And I can't wait to um, connect with you in person, even though you're going to be moving to LA yeah. one day in, in Miami. I can't wait. Definitely. Yeah. And um and I look forward to the Crypto Connect community and we'll have a link um when this when this drops so people can just click it and get in it. And um I'm just excited for the work that that you are continuing to do for us and for for crypto and and with the government and um that you're a badass woman and that you 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 show us how and what we can be. So thank you. You too. You too. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's been okay. really exciting. Thank you. I'll see you in Miami. Yay. Sounds great. All right. Oh, wait. I wore, I wore this shirt for you. It's Indeed. Unleashed. And I I'm going like to send it. you one because I think okay. that that's how you're living. And I think it's, it's freaking sexy. Awesome. I'd love All that. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'd love the message. Thank you. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye.